Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to be breaking down intelligence agencies. This is the first part of a two-part video. The second one will be coming out shortly. The second one is going to cover collaboration governments and when you should do them, if you should do them, how beneficial is it that you do them. But to really understand that, I think you really need to understand intelligence agencies in general. First things first, if you ever want to cheat, just type in agency.instant and it just allows you to click this and just instantly form an agency and you instantly get your operative. So if you want to cheat, you can cheat. It's also very good for demonstration purposes. First things first, let's go over operatives. How many can you have? Maximum is 10, as listed on this tooltip. You get one just for building the intelligence agency. After five upgrades, you can get additional operative slots by having five upgrades or by becoming spy master, which you can do after you have three upgrades. Becoming spy master also requires that you are in a faction. And do note, passive defense only counts as one, even if you do all four. It's five separate upgrades. Let's just become Spy Master real quick. So from becoming Spy Master, we got one operative slot. That's dependent on your other faction members. Specifically, your other faction members that are either high-level puppets, such as the Dominions, such as the Dominions, or are free. From 10 to 49, you get a quarter of an operative. From 15 up, you get half an operative. This number does seem to round. You can also assign an elusive gentleman, which is usually right at the bottom, right here. An extra operative slot and a minor reduction in the upgrade time means you upgrade in 25 days rather than 30. Now the question is, what operative should you be looking to get? Well, if we're looking at this list and we see this dude that has every trait on the face of the planet, yeah, just take him. Plus he has Seducer. Seducer makes you less likely to get detected, which makes them very good for spying on the Soviets. Safe Cracker makes them better at capturing ciphers and stealing blueprints. Escape Operative makes them better at rescuing other operatives. Commando is really good for resistance related stuff and not getting detected and capturing ciphers. Infiltration, infiltrator just reduces the risk of getting caught when doing an infiltration. These guys should get bonuses towards, towards these infiltrate missions. Master and interrogator, a little bit of extra counterintelligence, not much. Tough makes it so that the enemy doesn't get as much intel out of them for a day. They'll still get the same amount over time, but it'll just take longer. What you really want to be looking for is ones that have seducer, ones that give you bonuses to the missions you're going to be running. What are some good upgrades? So across the top is your intelligence. So they do exactly what they say they do. They just increase the amount of intelligence you get by 25%. So if we look at France right now, we've got 40% on their civilian. If we come back here and we upgrade and we look again and we let one day pass, we're now at 50%. That's a 25% increase. And that's the same for all of these. That's just what it does. It just takes your final number and then multiplies it by 1.25. These are very useful if you actually want to be able to come in here and see stuff. So once you're over 70%, you can see their national focus. It does need to be over 71% is required. For some reason, some reason 70, you still can't see it. For army, the more intel you get, the more you can see about their divisions and how much manpower they have in the field. If you get high enough on any one of these, you can actually see what they've researched. So one spy is actually not enough to see this. We're going to just do a couple upgrades, get the second spy, and then we'll let the intel build up because the amount of intel you get is based on the spread. And then there is a cap. So now that we have a full intel network on them, what we can do is we can actually put them on a quiet network. And what this does is we no longer get the active bonuses from the spy network. The active bonuses are the reduction to planning bonus, the minus one max entrenchment, which is literally one, by the way. If they have 10 entrenchment, it's going to be reduced to 9. So instead of a 20% bonus in combat, they're going to get an 18. Now you do get extra invasion defense and planning speed. Invasion defense, which is supposed to give you a reduction to the naval invasion penalty. I don't know if it actually does or not though, but it's supposed to. Anyways, when we put them on a silent network, you still get the bonuses from Intel network. You just lose that bonus. And now that we've gotten it high enough, we can see what they've researched in engineering and industry and Navy because we've gotten Navy above 80% as well. And there's also operations that'll help you out. You infiltrate the civilian administration, army, Navy, or air force, you will get additional Intel. Let's infiltrate their army real quick. Now, when we come in here and check, we'll see that we have 10% Intel from operations. That is the infiltrate that we just did. So that's what the top row branch upgrades are for. They just help you see more things. The defense here, well, you've got the two kinds. You have passive defense, which gives you counterintelligence. The main thing counterintelligence does is it increases the duration of operations against you, or if your enemy has it, increases your operations. The higher your passive defense, the longer they take. You also have anti-partisan. The root out resistance mission gives 10% reduction to resistance by default. If you get both upgrades, that increases to 15%. 
which can be quite useful if you're having difficulties with resistance and you're trying to make your clients go up without having your resistance be too high. In the middle here, boost your operations. On the right, you have pills. This just makes it so that when you're operating with one spy, you're less likely to have that spy get caught and more likely for your spy to die, which can be really useful because if you only have the one spy and that spy gets captured, you either need to get a second operative and rescue that spy, or you need to wait 270 days before you can recruit a new one. There's no way of dismissing a captured operative. Plastic explosives just make your strength and resistance missions better. Anything that's related to your make resistance contacts missions. Invisible ink gives you additional intel and reduces the risk of getting caught when you steal blueprints. Best paired with blueprint stealing, which makes it 25% more effective, which means you're more likely to get a better bonus, which is quite nice if we go steal a blueprint right now from the french i'll show you how effective this can be so when you steal blueprints what you're going to get is based on what you don't have already is we can use our three operatives we can steal a blueprint from them and if we come check we don't have tactical bombers one so there is a chance we'll just steal the tech but most likely we'll just get a boost for it and actually we did manage to just steal so we just managed to steal tactical bomber once Stealing tech can be quite powerful. It is so powerful, some multiplayer mods just can't, don't allow it. It's just not an option. This fourth row is about operative training, according to what they claim. And there's some pretty big things down here. Localized training centers. So if we grab localized training centers and dismiss this operative and then allow the one day to tick, we now have a spare operative slot and we can recruit anywhere in Europe because we're already based in Europe. If we wanted to recruit elsewhere, we'd have to come in here and create one of these sections depending on where you want an operative. Getting localized training centers is basically required to spy, to spy on the Soviets in no step back because you need to get the Soviet nationality, which reduces your own operative's detection chance factor, increases the speed at which your Intel network grows, and it makes your operations more effective in the country, which is nice, but the main thing is you want that own operative detection chance factor minus 10%. So localized training center is very important when you're spying on the Soviets, less so on everyone else, but it, it's still nice. Commando training increases the chance that your operatives have commando by 100%, basically doubling it. It does not guarantee your operatives have commando. Honestly, even doing commando trading, you're not going to see commando as a trait very often. So for all I know, this is bugged and doesn't do anything. Interrogation technique is very good. It doubles the chance that you're going to capture enemy operatives and it increases the rate at which you get intel from them. But it's mostly that first one. Capturing enemy operatives is huge. And then diplomatic training and psychological warfare, they just boost missions. These ones you only do if you're actually going to do those things. And even then you don't really need to. Like the diplomatic pressure mission effects, that just increases the speed at which diplomatic pressure increases. It does not actually increase the amount of diplomatic pressure you can apply. Not necessarily that good. And then you've got your cryptology department across the bottom. They are locked behind mechanical computing for the higher level ones. Getting this just allows you to decrypt your enemy so we could decrypt the Germans if we wanted to. The two on the middle left here increase the rate at which you're going to decrypt them. The two on the right increase how long it takes the enemy to decrypt you. Don't do these until right before you're about to go to war with the enemy. You want to do these as late as possible because you want to give the enemy the least amount of time possible to decrypt you. Because even if they have you fully decrypted 10 days before the war if you finish this five days before the war they're gonna have to decrypt you again because your level just increased so they're gonna have to decrypt the difference so they're not gonna have you decrypted when the war starts so those are the different branch upgrades which ones are useful i tend to start off just by getting the ones across the top and then passive defense and then interrogation techniques and then sometimes i get to cryptology Cryptology is important in multiplayer, but in single player, honestly, the video I'm doing on collaboration governments, I'll go over it whether or not you even want a spy agency. These upgrades are quite expensive, especially when you do most of them. Anyways, let's move on. So building an Intel network is quite simple. You get 40 by base because he's a Soviet. If we put him in the Soviet Union, instead of 0.4, he'd actually end up getting 0.5. If we come and get a second spy just by cheating real quick, doing a couple of these. Passive defense only counts as one, by the way. Now that we can get a second spy, Let's turn off agency instant. Because we have two guys here, the first guy is going to give us 0.4 a day. The second guy is going to give us 0.2 a day. So that is a diminishing return. But if you're just looking to get to 50 because you want to run an operation, then stacking them together is actually quite effective. If you have two people on the same state and you're starting at zero, it'll take you 84 days to get to 50. If you only put the one dude there, it'd take you 125. So even though it's a diminishing return, it's still a beneficial diminishing return. And when you stack them on top of each other, they do actually expand the network further 
than if you just had one year. Now, obviously, it's not as good as if we actually spread them out. They'd get a wider coverage spread out, but it's still a decent bit. When you have this network, you also get these effects. Let's just set those to 100 real quick. So at 100%, you get 100% invasion defense. According to the dev diary, that is supposed to completely remove the naval invasion penalty. Does it actually? Don't ask me. I would argue it doesn't. You get 50% planning speed, which is nice. Minus 100% max planning factor for the enemy, which is huge. If you build a full spy network in this state, they just can't plan against you. They will not get any planning bonus. The one problem with this though, is if their line is on this state right here and they don't control this state, then you don't get any of these bonuses here because they're state level. So if you're holding a defensive line along here and that means you own the state and you have a spy network over here, it won't fill in this part of the state. So all of the units here will not suffer any of these penalties. Completely nonsense, but that's just how it works. And then the max entrenchment value is worthless. That is actually just one. So if your max entrenchment was 10, it'd instead be nine, which is the equivalent of going from a 20% bonus in combat to an 18% bonus in combat. It does nothing. Now, I did skip over one, and that's counterintelligence. So counterintelligence, you get the same diminishing returns. Ideally, you don't really have many of your spies sitting at home just doing counterintelligence. You can put these in allies. So if you're worried about your ally getting spied on, maybe somebody's going to steal tech from them. You can put your spies there and give them counterintelligence, even if they don't have an agency. Just a little bit of extra help. Now, if we come back and we take one of these guys, and we use the quiet network, what this does is it keeps the Intel network at 100%, but you don't get any of the bonuses. You don't get the planning bonus reduction, but you get to keep all of the Intel you got from Intel network. So you still have that, and you're still sitting at 100%. So if you want to run any of your missions, you can. And it's basically impossible to get caught on silent network. So boost ideology, propaganda, control trade, and diplomatic pressure really require two spies. So if we put on diplomatic pressure right now, and we let the game run. So despite what the game tells you, you don't actually need an Intel network to be active to use diplomatic pressure. You can apply diplomatic pressure even with the silent network. So only this guy has a chance of getting caught, not this guy. So if we let this tick up, what we're going to find is we're slowly getting diplomatic pressure on the French. This is really useful because it allows you to get people who don't want to be in a non-aggression pact with you to be in a non-aggression pact with you. Now, you can't overcome the Japan having strategic reasons to be hostile to you, but if you're, say, playing as Germany and you manage to cap the Allies and all of a sudden you own the Dutch East Indies, eventually Japan's going to come after you. So if in the beginning of 41, you force them to sign a non-aggression pact with you, you just bought a year where they can't declare war on you. It also applies to inviting them to faction. Unfortunately, it does not apply to any of these, which I think is an oversight, because why wouldn't diplomatic pressure get you military access? Why wouldn't it help you negotiate licenses? That makes no sense. Troll trade is diplomatic pressure, but for trade. What this means is if we come here and find something that France is exporting, like right here, they are exporting rubber and there is only 10 available to us. If we let this run, it just ticked up to 11 and it'll keep going up a little bit by a little bit. How much of this you can import is based on your trade influence. 228 divided by the sum of all of those influences. That's how much we can just forcefully buy. Now, if we did that, the Soviets would probably buy from someone else because they're the lowest and they would lose out on trade, but that's how much we can force buy and you can use control trade to get, to get yourself just a little bit more of that pie we're already up to 70 percent and we've only gotten oh no we finally got two rubber out of it i mean you can use it but it doesn't do much propaganda is reducing their stability if we come in here and check as time goes on eventually yep you'll see foreign propaganda and they're just getting a mind taking penalty weekly this can actually force the enemy to deal with strikes it'll reduce their factory output if they're above 50 it'll increase their consumer goods as you drop their stability if you're at war with someone and you force them below 50 percent stability they have a higher chance of getting strikes in multiplayer this is either banned or they've forgotten it exists and will be banned if you do it and it's a colossal dick move boost ideology, you can use this to make them democratic. We put an Intel network in Berlin and we start boosting ideology in Berlin, the democratic. And as the spy network grows, you'll just see that their democracy support starts growing just a little bit. And if you keep doing it, you could come in here and you could run a orchestrated coup, which will allow you to cause a civil war. Anyways, those are the different missions you can send your operatives on. Now let's go through the rest of the operations we haven't discussed. So there's one that people with a keen eye might notice is missing. And that is a collaboration government. Democracies cannot do collaboration governments. It's unfortunate, but they just can't. So you've got make resistance contacts, which you can do in a specific state. And that state needs to have resistance. Let's do it here. 
in Tunisia. And that'll take 60 days and it's going to cost us a little bit of support equipment. Now we've got contacts with the resistance. So we can try and sabotage the resistance. And it doesn't matter where. We can now do it anywhere. So we can sabotage industry, infrastructure, or resources. Or we can strengthen resistance, which for a normal operation of normal effectiveness will increase the resistance target by 10%. So if we select Tunisia and we look, they have a resistance target of minus 2%. It's going to cost us two sips. This isn't that bad. This gets really expensive the more you do it. It takes 50 days to happen and we got forced into hiding. But now if we check, they have plus 10% resistance targets from Intel operations. This is really annoying when you're playing as Germany and trying to occupy France. They can just keep doing these in either Paris or Warsaw, and it makes it really hard to keep your resistance under control, which is a benefit of forming a collaboration government. Collaboration governments you can't do these against. There is the Orchestrate Coup, which has a lot of requirements and is basically impossible to do against a major, and nearly impossible to do if they're at war. Coordinated Strike is really nice and pretty simple to demonstrate. If we grab all of our stuff, we move it down here, group it up, and we're going to put it on strategic bombing and port strike in Western France. We go allow, diplo, will allow us to justify a war goal on France, and that'll take a while. Now, if you really want to do a coordinated strike, you should go and get portable radios, just because it doubles the effectiveness. Okay, we finally got the justification. Instead of declaring war, we're going to prepare the coordinated strike, and this is going to cost a lot of sieves. And we need to select a state, not actually a state, you need to select a air zone. So we're going to select Western France. When this operation completes, it will automatically declare the war for you. But do be careful, war is going to be declared in two days. We got an ace, automatically declared war, and then let's see, they lost a carrier, a destroyer, and 18 submarines. And now that we're at war, we get to see the last one, which is plant intelligence. Let's just do let's just do a plant intelligence real quick. But what that did was for us, it created 24 fake intel units. What does that mean? Well, these ones that we can only kind of see, we've got the little intel symbol. They just exist now. If the French attack into these units, they just disappear. We could have set them up on this line right here. And if the French don't think they're strong enough to attack these intel units, they'll just sit there. They don't know that these divisions don't exist. To the AI, we just randomly deployed 24 more divisions. So those are all the operations, bar one, collaboration governments. I'm going to be going over collaboration governments later. Lastly, let's go over operative traits. Different nations have different operatives that will always appear, such as the UK. They have Nancy Wake. She's an escape artist. She will always appear. Escape artists are nice for when you have an operative get captured. They are better at not getting caught when rescuing another operative and their operation slightly cheaper. Tough also has to do with operatives that are caught. When these operatives are caught, the enemy gets less intel per day, which means they'll get less intel if you immediately turn around and rescue them. Double agent doesn't do anything. It just tells you that they have multiple nationalities. Multiple nationality guys are good because they'll work well in multiple different countries. Master interrogator, it's a trait, I guess. You can have it, but it's not particularly good. Point two counterintelligence, it's honestly not that good. It doesn't do much. This guy's a Soviet spy, so he's great. You know, for spying on the Soviets, he also has linguist, which over time increases the chance that they might get another nationality, but honestly, it doesn't seem to ever happen. We have Royal Groomed, who's good at controlled trade and diplomatic. Same with the upgrade, it just increases the speed at which it works, does not actually increase the cap. Seducer is great, minus 20% chance of getting detected, plus they're better at infiltration missions. These ones, Infiltrator, they are good at infiltrations. That's the same benefit Seducer gets, but they have none of the detection chance reduction. Safe Crackers are really good at stealing blueprints and capturing ciphers but mostly you're getting these guys for the blueprints the capture cipher mission isn't that useful and it's also really hard to get to show up commandos they have a minus 10 percent detection chance which is half of what seducers get they're also better at sabotage missions and capturing ciphers you have orator we're better at boosting ideology and staging coups not that those happen very frequently and then you have demolition experts which are commandos but worse because they don't get any of the detection chance reduction but they get the same bonuses for doing resistance operations the best operatives are the ones that have seducers Producers. Other than that, commandos with the reduction in detection chance are also quite nice. And then safe crackers if you're going to be stealing blueprints. This was just a rundown of how the intelligence agency works. Something I think is important to know when you weigh everything I do in my next video, which I will link in the description below. It should come out tomorrow. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.